In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of angular momentum. Uh, in order to demonstrate this concept, we're going to consider a particle that is moving on the xy plane. So let's set up our axis here, z axis. Uh, y-axis, x-axis, this is a right-handed coordinate system, x, y, and z. Now I'm going to put a particle uh, at a certain radial distance r from the origin. So let's put our particle here. This is the position vector r of the particle. And let's say that this position vector is making an angle phi with respect to the y-axis here. And this particle has a linear momentum uh, p. It's moving on the xy plane. All right. So the particle has mass m. Uh, it has position vector r linear momentum p so i have one particle mass is m position vector is r and linear momentum is p and linear momentum means remember it's mass times the velocity of the particle, where the velocity of the particle is dr dt. So this is instantaneous velocity. Therefore, this is the instantaneous linear momentum of the particle. Now, what do I know about the linear momentum of a particle? If I use uh, Newton's second law for this particle, Newton's second law says, looking at the motion of this particle from an inertial reference frame, the net force acting on the particle, the sum of all the forces acting on the particle, is mass times acceleration, which is mass times dv dt. Right? Since mass is a constant, this is actually d dt of mv which is dp dt so rate of change of uh, instantaneous linear moment now we have a new concept the concept of torque and how do i calculate the the torque acting on this particle so if i take this origin as the pivot point so this is my pivot so for rotations around the z-axis uh, remember the way I calculate the torque I draw the vector from uh, the pivot point to the point of application of the force so there is a force that causes uh, or a, a combination of forces that causes this motion so if I write the cross product r with the net force acting on the particle the sum of all the forces what am i going to get the sum of all the torques acting on the particle and using the newton second law relationship a net force is equal to dp dt i will have r cross dp dt for the net torque acting on this particle now this is actually r cross m dv dt or m r cross dv dt okay so uh Let's think about this for a moment. 
if I consider as a side the cross product dr dt with p, what would this cross product be? Okay, so this would be velocity cross with m times velocity. If I take the cross product of uh, the same vector with itself, what am I going to get? Because sine of the angle between the two vectors is zero, I'm going to get zero here. So I would like to add zero to this result. So let's add zero to this result. So what am I going to get? The sum of all the torques acting on the particle is uh, R cross dp dt plus zero for zero I write dr dt cross with p. So why did I do this? Because by doing so I have obtained actually the derivative of r cross with p time derivative. Okay, so I have found that just like the force can be written as the time derivative of a physical quantity, the linear momentum, torque can also be written as the time derivative of a physical quantity, which I find to be r cross p. Okay, so going with the analogy between translations and rotations, I'm going to define a vector L that's equal to R cross P, which is R cross MV. Uh, this is the angular momentum. It is the angular momentum of this particle. All right, so L is equal to R cross P. And in this definition, once again, what is R? What is P? R is the position vector and P is the linear momentum MV. Therefore, I find that the net torque acting on this particle is actually dl dt okay so this is analogous to the net force acting on the particle being equal to dp dt so uh, in our analogy between translations and rotations remember a translational uh, quantity force is analogous to the rotational quantity torque the translational quantity linear momentum is analogous to rotational quantity l such that the net torque is equal to dl dt just like the net force is equal to dp dt okay so if I extend this discussion to a system of particles, so now let's say I have a system that consists of many particles, not just one particle. If I write the net external force acting on this system of particles, so I'm ignoring the internal forces, this is equal to dp total dt, uh, rate of change of linear momentum. And if I write the total angular momentum of these particles, it is L1 plus L2 plus L3, etc. Ln sum over i 1 to n. L sub i, I add up all the angular momenta, uh, then I find that dl total 
uh, dt is going to be equal to sum over i 1 to n dli dt and this is equal to sum over i from 1 to n the torque acting on each particle because for each particle i particle i have the torque is equal to dli dt so i find that the net external torque acting on the particle is dl total dt just like the case with a single particle so uh, concentrating on this equation uh, if i take dt to the left hand side i get some of the torque acting on the particle dt integrated over time will give me the integral of dl total which is the change in the total angular momentum so i call this angular impulse okay so i define this to be angular impulse such that the angular impulse is equal to the integral of torque dt and it gives me the change in angular momentum so what i have just written here is called angular momentum angular impulse theorem and furthermore i realize that if the net external torque acting on a system is zero this is going to imply dl total dt is zero that means l total is a constant in time so initial uh, angular momentum has to be equal to the final angular momentum so under this condition when i have the net external torque is equal to zero i have a constant angular momentum or in other words i have conservation of angular momentum okay so let's summarize this result uh, in translational motion i had uh, if the net external force acting on a system is zero the change in the linear momentum must be zero conservation of uh, linear momentum if it is non-zero the integral uh, net force dt that is the impulse is equal to the change in the linear momentum now in the rotational analogy i have if the net external torque acting on a system is zero the change in total angular momentum must be zero angular momentum is conserved and if i write the angular impulse uh, that is the net external torque acting on a system of particles uh, this is going to be equal to the change in the total angular momentum of the system so this basically summarizes uh, the relationship between uh, angular momenta and angular impulse and similar similar to the translational quantity linear momentum and the force and uh, the in, the impulse uh, momentum theorem okay so we have uh, two cases if the total external force is zero the linear momentum is conserved if the total external torque is zero angular momentum is conserved 
if they are non-zero, then the time integral, the impulse, is the change in the linear momentum, and the time integral of the torque 